I spent 150 days in Valheim Muslands and here's what happened. Can I survive in a beautiful but dangerous landscape and defeat the sixth boss? Welcome back to the 100 day journey in Valheim. If you haven't watched 1 to 100 days be sure to watch that to catch up. With the defeat of Yagluf I was ready to venture into the Mistlands. I built a wisp fountain as described by Hugen. I obtained a wisp and created a wisp light. On day 101 I cooked serpent meat and prepared serpent stew, I swiftly packed my ship, gathering fine wood for a portal. I disassembled some items to bring along, then set sail towards the north to explore the misty lands. Eventually I found the mist lands. It was a beautiful but dangerous place. I sailed into the harbor and encountered a floating brain. The unknown posed a threat to my survival. Was this it? I encountered the formidable foe, the Gyal, who shot fireballs and spawned ticks. But in the end I emerged victorious. As I explored the mistlands I noticed how treacherous the terrain was for walking. Eventually I faced three seekers, which could have been the end of my journey. But I persevered. I came across an infested mine, which Hugin and Moonin explained. I ventured inside and began attacking the insects within. On day 102, I continued to delve into the mine. My bone mass ability proved to be advantageous, but it would eventually wear off. I stumbled upon a hidden door and acquired some unknown loot. Eventually, I made my way out and encountered a stone tower. For the first time, I encountered friendly NPCs called the Dverger. I saw the potential for this to become my future base. During my exploration, I also encountered and killed a hare. I returned to my boat and sailed back home to gather my crafting stations and metals. I had gathered my artisan table and all necessary cooking stations. Since they were made out of metal, I couldn't teleport them with me. I made the mistake of then becoming encumbered on the boat and had to drop some copper and tin. I stored the rest and eventually made my way back to the Mistlands where I created a portal. Afterwards, I explored more of the Mistlands and returned to the Dverger Tower. I used my MoMA's ability to destroy a glowing crate, as I needed to eliminate them in order to make this my home. Home. The dwarves were tough and their use of magic was something I hadn't encountered before aside from the fooling shamans. My Frostner was really good with the frost damage, which slows them down. Eventually I made it down to two dwarves, which I almost died to. I discovered some glowing roots and approached the tower, where I stealthily killed a dwarf. 
In the coming days, I spent a lot of time renovating my home as it was in a state of disrepair. I made multiple trips back to my boat to retrieve items and resources for construction. On day 105, I built a chest and continued moving my possessions. I assembled some of the buildings and built a fire, which made my home look beautiful. I then encountered an event with a swarm of bats. On day 106, I continued to repair my base and constructed dark wood gates. I also spent time upgrading my workbench and exploring more of the infested mine. The seekers proved to be formidable foes, and without my bone mass ability, they could deal 30 damage even with my padded armor. I then encountered the most dangerous monster in the area, a seeker soldier. After defeating the soldier, I found an item that was sealed away, which would be useful for summoning the sixth boss. I discovered another hidden door with treasures and continued killing seekers and exploring. The area was dark, but I eventually found my way out and made my way home to continue constructing. On day 107, I moved my dragon bed and killed a gyal. I moved more items from my boat and set out to explore more of the mistlands. I destroyed another crate and ran into an infested mine. I continued exploring and defeating threats. I found more cores but nothing too interesting. I eventually made my way home, but the terrain was challenging to navigate. On day 108, I sailed back home to retrieve more black metal ore. I teleported home, chopped wood and smelted black metal. During the night, I narrowly escaped death at the hands of goblins. On day 109, I continued smelting and chopping wood whilst farming at my main base. Most of the day was spent smelting, but I made the mistake of renaming a portal and going straight in, which left me stuck and forced me to walk back home. On day 110, I had all the black metal and encountered another gyal, which I killed. I returned to my boat, but ticks clung to me and my attempts to shake them off failed. Despite the setback, I managed to recover my items. On day 111, I continued chopping wood and transferring some items to upgrade my workbenches. I also crafted a black metal axe as I would need a lot of Yggdrasil wood, which I chopped on day 112. With my cores, I made a black forge and checked out new weapons and items available. I created a carapace spear and continued chopping. I tested my spear against a rogue and it proved to be adequate. I then engaged in a thrilling battle against a mage. On day 113, I dismantled some of my base to create more space and rebuilt everything.
The rebuilding process took some time, but the end result was a spacious and well-constructed base. I cooked some food and continued exploring the Mistlands, where I encountered and killed another Seeker soldier. I found another mine to the north of my base, but returned home after a brief investigation. I built a stone oven and baked lox pie. I also bought an egg from a merchant and made a small house to incubate it. Look how cute it was. I went back to the infested mines and battled through the insects to retrieve more loot and cores. On day 115, I created major healing meats and explored more infested mines. This routine continued, but I won't detail it any further. At home, I made sap extractors from the crates I had destroyed and used the chopped wood to create an iter refinery. I added the soft tissue from slain dwarves and sap from the extracted roots and watched the machine refine the iter. With the refined iter, I obtained a recipe for all the forge items. I then headed back to the plains to gather more black metal for a pickaxe. At the plains I had to hunt down some more goblins to obtain a black metal pickaxe, which was needed to mine various resources in the mistlands. During the evening I smelted the black metal and created some powerful healing potions. I also found a hatch chick and continued farming and smelting black metal. On day 117 I bought more eggs for the chickens and brewed more potions. I continued killing goblins for black metal and smelting it during the night. I also identified an unused section of my base and tore it down. I spent the rest of the night smelting and on day 118 I continued smelting and goblin hunting. Back at my base I upgraded the workbench and built a staircase to the roof for future use. I loaded up a large amount of black metal and sailed to a nearby swamp to mine for iron. After completing my task, I sailed back to the Misty Lands. I organized my inventory and crafted a warm and cozy wolf rug. I then meticulously crafted a beautifully carved wooden banner. I embarked on a renovation project to replace the worn out wooden flooring in the tower with a new high quality flooring. I also created an armor stand for added comfort. On day 120, I successfully repaired the roof, building a smelter, charcoal kiln, and cooking station. I also acquired three hens, adding to my collection of resources. I transferred the black metal from the boat and constructed an iter refinery, and started the smelting process. I crafted a durable black metal pickaxe, which I used to extract iron from an ancient sword. With this newfound source of iron, I no longer need to worry about the swamp anymore, right? I upgraded my cauldron, discovering a plethora of new recipes. I cooked and baked a delicious meat platter, which would soon become the best food in the game. On day 121, I continued construction and food preparation. I explored deeper into the unknown and came across a giant corpse, but there were some ticks there. I bravely fought off the ticks and mined into its skull, discovering valuable soft tissue. I returned home safely during the night and continued to refine iter. I organized my inventory and awaited the results. I harvested eggs from my chickens and created a wisp fountains for future sword crafting. I finally crafted my dream weapon, the Immin Affel, and eagerly tested it in the mines.
I ventured to the far north of my mistlands and stumbled upon a hidden door, which led me to a trove of loot. On my way back, I encountered a seeker soldier, but it was only a tier 1. Well, despite putting up a good fight, I unfortunately fell in battle, but managed to retrieve my items and defeat this soldier on my second try. Just as I was sorting out my inventory, a Gyal attacked my base and caused significant damage, but I was able to defeat it. I then made a mist walker using wisps and went on the offensive against the local residents. Back in the mistlands, I made a fresh salad and continued my explorations, discovering another infested mine which I swiftly looted and cleared of all its inhabitants. Upon returning home, I crafted a full set of carapace armor and some more food. I processed the soft tissue I had harvested as well. On day 125, I made a carapace buckler and went foraging discovering a petrified bone with more soft tissue and a mysterious rune. I also encountered a gyal and attempted to ride it, but I was thrown off into the water. Undeterred, I swam back to safety and back at home I added tin to my furnace because I crafted a butcher's knife to kill a friendly chicken. Although the chicken food was good, I found the mist hair to be even better. I then made a galder table for magic items, chopping Yggdrasil wood to make a staff of embers and cooking Aether food for mana. The rest of the day was spent using the new magical weapon and organizing my inventory with a newfound determination to become a powerful mage. On day 127, I took the time to organize my inventory and fuel the refinery. I also went on a wood chopping expedition and discovered another infested mine in the north, which I eventually cleared after a long struggle. After sorting my inventory again, I farmed more resources and upgraded my black forge. I also upgraded my armor and carapace buckler and set sail for the swamp in search of iron. I ended up forgetting about the ancient swords. I then returned and smelted the iron and upgraded my storage. I continued chopping wood and spent the day making a demolisher which proved to be an excellent tool. I stumbled upon another infested mine and used the demolisher to clear it out. I explored another dwarf tower and decided to attack it. In the northwest, I encountered and fought against more dwarves, but this time a two-star mage was present.
I ended up dying in battle, but I was determined to retrieve my items. I ran back, but a seeker almost killed me. I managed to get my items and tried to defeat the dwarf healers, but I had to return home to smelt more iron and make a staff of protection. I spent the day farming, making more food and fueling the refinery. On day 132, I sailed to the queen boss location, which I found in the infested mines as seen on the map here. After fighting through numerous seekers, I found the structure and the runes, but I decided not to listen to them. I returned to the boat, killing more dwarves along the way for soft tissue. I found another skull, but unfortunately, I had forgotten my pickaxe. I then sailed back home. On day 134, I arrived at my destination and engaged in various activities such as cooking salad, farming food, and increasing my collection of chickens. I also farmed barley and made some magical food. As I needed flax for the magical armor, I sailed back to the plains and fought with the goblin tribe to steal their flax. I used my demolisher to destroy them and I then moved to another goblin village and repeated the process. I'm the one stealing the flax, am, am I the goblin all along? Back at home I processed the flax and sap and encountered a skeleton surprise which was perfect for my demolisher. I chop fine wood for a portal and sail back to the queen to make one. I sail to the skeleton again with my pickaxe to gather soft tissue. On my way back, I decided to actually get the abusal barnacles. And then after that, I got to kill another sea serpent. Back at home, I sorted my inventory, processed the refinery and cooked more food. My next task was to go to the swamp and kill an abomination for an arbalist. I successfully made a weapon and its ammo. On day 139, I made a full set of fighter armor and made a weapon that could summon skeletons, a dead razor. I then tested the arbalist on a seeker and my mage class on a seeker soldier. I mined the skeleton and processed it. Back at home, I also made my skeletons do combat for blood magic levels. On day 140, I sorted my inventory and made more carapace bolts. I also mined some more soft tissue when extracted more sap. I had to make my way to the mountain to kill Drakes for a frost staff, so I did that. The staff of frost was mine and I continue upgrading my magical armory. I cooked more food and chopped more wood before teleporting to the queen where I found and fought a Gyal. Unfortunately, I died and on day 142 managed to retrieve my items. My frost staff was quite good, but my staff of embers was better. I then explored more of the mistlands and found another infested mines in an abandoned dwarf tower. I fought through the horde and back at home, I upgraded my staff of protection and cooked more magical food. I also upgraded my arbalest and got some minor A tier mead. I found another infested mines because I needed seal breaker fragments. I then found found a two star seeker, is this the end?
The skeleton killed a two-star seeker. He will be named Gigachad. I loot more of the mines and made my way home. I made a seal breaker and also had a feather cape, which was great. I found another skeleton for soft tissue and mined it. On day 145, I made bile bombs and upgraded my magical skills. I then upgraded my feather cape and mage armor and kill more drakes and chop more wood to upgrade my frost staff. I had fully upgraded armor and then went to bed. On day 146, I opened the queen using my seal breaker. I summoned my two Giga Chads and headed into this battle. Let's do this, warriors. This fight was tough, but with my magical armor and staff of protection, I was dealing with her. Attention all warriors, the Queen's Forsaken Altar is a unique boss encounter in the game, located in the Mistlands. Unlike other bosses, the player must access the infested citadel to fight the Queen, which is achieved by using a seal breaker on its entrance. The location of the nearest infested citadel can be found by searching for runes in the infested mines. In terms of combat, the Queen has several attacks that the player must be prepared to deal with. Her melee attacks include slashes from either of her arms, a bite that also poisons the player and a ground stab that causes significant knockback. The queen will also burrow into the ground and emerge elsewhere after a short period, adding an element of unpredictability to the fight. Another attack to watch out for is the queen's ability to shoot multiple projectiles that deal both physical and poison damage. When these projectiles make contact with the player or environment, they explode and spawn seeker broods. The player will also receive the slimed effect for a short duration. The queen has a roar attack that will cause two seekers to spawn from nearby holes in the walls and pillars. Finally, the queen can crawl towards the battle and perform a wide slash. These various abilities make the queen a formidable opponent that requires careful strategy and coordination to defeat. Good luck my soldiers and may the gods be with you. And there we go. I had defeated the final boss and was thrilled. I gathered her trophy and currently in development items. Oh, I could respawn her with this altar as well. On day 147, I fixed up my base and had another skeleton surprise. I gathered honey and did some fun activities with my skeletons. I then hung up the trophy of the queen which doubles A tier regeneration. On day 148, I farmed some more and expanded my compound and planted more trees. On day 149 I spent the day just farming blood magic levels and finally went to sleep. Anyways, it has been 150 days here in Valheim. If you want to continue on the save file, they consider becoming a Patreon or member. Anyways, thanks to my Patreon members and if you're bored and watch this video next.